It might have been our mum or a well-meaning uncle, or it might have been the scene in Pixar's The Incredibles from back in 2004, but at some point in our lives, a lot of us will have heard the old adage that listening to Mozart or other forms of classical music will make you more intelligent. Let's see how true that really is. The Mozart effect is a term that first came about from a French ear, nose and throat doctor called Dr. Alfred Tomatis. Born into a family of talented musicians but unfit for the stage himself, he became interested in the idea of retraining the human ear, believing that poor hearing was the root cause for a whole host of problems. These ranged from those caused mechanically by singing to more severe developmental problems such as autism. He eventually developed an alternative medical therapy called the Tomatis Method, which used, amongst other things, the music of Mozart to help these patients improve their communication. But this isn't how the Mozart effect became truly famous. That came organically from a different source, a single paper published in Nature in 1993 by Gordon Shaw, Francis Rauscher, and Catherine Kai from the University of California, and it just so happened to take the name later. They took 36 university students and sat them in three groups. One sat down and listened to relaxation audio designed to lower their blood pressure. One listened to nothing at all, and one group listened to Sonata for Two Pianos in D major, K488 by Mozart. The groups were then tested on their spatial IQ. These tests involve, for example, imagining a cut piece of paper that has been folded many times. Those in the group that listen to the Mozart average eight or nine points higher than the others for a period of 15 minutes after listening. IQ itself was never measured though. But that's what people gauged from the findings. Loads of newspaper articles showed amazement at how listening to Mozart improved these spatial IQ scores, but took that to be main IQ. A follow-up study by the same team showed three to four-year-old children taking piano lessons scored higher on spatiotemporal reasoning than controls. Things really took off when news of these studies reached the late Don Campbell, who subsequently wrote books on how music could heal the body, strengthen the mind, and unlock the creative spirit. It was he who released the book on how Mozart affected children, launching him into stardom that even influenced politics at one point. In 1998, the governor of the American state of Georgia, Zell Miller, set aside $105,000 of his annual budget to provide each newborn with a tape or CD of classical music. Parents of young children everywhere finally had a way to relax and let the music take the strain. Except, this was largely wishful thinking. In the years that followed, studies designed to replicate the apparent success of Shaw, Rauscher, and Kai achieved conflicting results. A common factor for this was the small sample size of many of the studies, which granted limited effect size. In fact, a meta-analysis led by Pichnik, Voracek, and Foreman found that the effect sizes in the original studies were three times larger than any other group attempting the same sort of study. This brought in the question of publication bias. What does seem consistent and was expressed well in the study by Nantai and Schellenberg in 1999 was that individual performance was actually more likely to be an artifact of enjoyment arousal or simple preference. They tested the music of Mozart and Schubert versus a short story by Stephen King, finding both conferred improvements in subsequent reasoning tests. In neuroanatomical terms, arousal functions as a psychophysiological state of having your sensory organs stimulated such that they perceive a given stimulus. The main way that this works seems to be related to the ascending reticular activating system. This is a series of multiple nuclei connected across the medulla, posterior midbrain, and the anterior pons to the cerebral cortex. All of this channeled through the thalamus and hypothalamus. 
Through interactions with the autonomic and endocrine systems, they regulate wakefulness and consciousness, with subsequent changes in heart rate and blood pressure corresponding to a more alert state. It's the same system that you would expect if a predator was hunting you. The fear or fight and flight response that's generated would increase your arousal and quite possibly your performance as you seek to save yourself from a predator. Unfortunately, it seems that in the case of music and Mozart, this doesn't confer any persistent increase in intelligence. So, in a nutshell, no, listening to Mozart doesn't make you smarter. But if you like his music, or anyone else's for that matter, there's still a good chance that your preference could improve your performance in a given task. Many surgeons like to listen to music when they operate, and some students have to listen to music when they're revising for exams, for example. It varies from person to person, but if it works for you, why not? This video is made possible by our Patreon supporters, so if you want to support us, the link is down below in the description, and don't forget to drop us a like. We'll see you at the next video.